Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Friday, September 7th. This is Gina Palma. Over the next few days, our main concerns across the Great Basin will be breezy winds. Today we'll have some breezy winds along the Sierra front with gusts 25 to 30 miles per hour and low relative humidity. We'll also have a few isolated thunderstorms remaining over parts of northeast Utah. However, much less lightning activity than we've seen in the last few days as dry air has moved in to much of the Great Basin. On Saturday, ahead of a cold front, winds will increase in a larger area over the northern half of the Great Basin and will be strongest in the areas shaded in orange, especially across Idaho where wind gusts could exceed 40 miles per hour. Further south into Utah and Nevada, most gusts will be between 25 and 30 or 35 miles per hour. On Sunday, we'll continue with some breezy winds over southern areas of the Great Basin. Looking at the last 24 hours, we had scattered thunderstorms across the eastern and southern half of Utah and also widely scattered thunderstorms over parts of Idaho into northeast Nevada. These thunderstorms did not produce a whole lot of precipitation, however humidity was significantly higher across Utah and thunderstorms further west and north were on the drier side producing gusty outflow winds. Over the last 24 hours yesterday, the Great Basin saw a light initial attack with 17 new fires reported. Over the last 7 to 14 days, we've seen precipitation generally focused over the southern half of the Great Basin over the last week, but this has still been below normal for the time of year, which with continued dry conditions over much of northern and western Nevada, northern Utah, and southern Idaho. Therefore, fuels conditions are still critical over the northern half of the Great Basin especially, where ERCs are still above the 80th to 90th percentile, and even over parts of eastern Idaho, ERCs are above the 97th percentile. Looking at some of our individual fuels charts, you can see over northern Utah, which is fairly representative of both northern Utah, into northern Nevada and southern Idaho, ERCs are near or above records for the time of year. Even over western Nevada, ERCs have been well above normal for some time and are near records also for the time of year. The satellite loop from this morning shows a trough of low pressure off the west coast which will continue moving eastward pushing a cold front through the northern Great Basin this weekend. Moisture is really clearing out of the Great Basin and is now located over far eastern areas therefore any thunderstorm activity will be very isolated and mainly over the far eastern side of the Great Basin with sunny warm and dry conditions and a little breezy winds over the western half of the area. Looking at the smoke dispersion forecast over the next 36 hours, smoke will continue to be located over the northern half of the Great Basin as winds remain out of the southwest to west across the area. However, as winds pick up on Saturday, we might see a little bit more smoke across the area from California fires and from fires over the western side of the Great Basin. If we look at the weather for later today, again you can see drier conditions pushing into western areas with only remaining moisture in the far east and no high risk issued. Relative humidity today will drop into the single digits to low teens across much of the Great Basin in the lower terrain and winds today will generally be light across the area. However, we will have a slight increase along the Sierra front with westerly winds between 25 and 30 miles per hour along with those dry conditions. Winds will also be moderate over the central Idaho. As we move into Saturday, a cold front pushes into the northern areas, therefore we'll have winds increase in a larger area and we do have high risk issued for much of southern Idaho into parts of northeast Nevada and into western Nevada. Also very dry air moving in across the region. Therefore relative humidity will continue to drop still generally in the single digits to around 10 percent across much of Nevada into western Utah and a little bit higher across Idaho. But you can see where those winds are the strongest on Saturday especially over central and eastern Idaho where wind gusts will exceed 35 or 40 miles per hour. Along the Sierra front, they'll generally be around 25 to 30 miles per hour and similar winds over eastern Nevada. As we move into Sunday, this first front pushes off to the east and we'll be watching a stronger area of low pressure drop south, but generally benign conditions for Sunday with dry, con with dry weather and winds lighter overall, therefore no high risk on Sunday. You can see those relative humidities have not changed much on Sunday. Along with low daytime humidities, for this time of year we will see lower overnight recoveries. Looking at the wind gusts on Sunday, generally lighter winds overall, still some breezy winds along the Sierra front, and also some gusty winds over southern areas of the Great Basin. However, we have not issued high risk for the south, as these areas' fuels are not as critical as areas further north. 
Forecast amounts of precipitation, the only precipitation are with any thunderstorms today over parts of the Uinta Mountains up into Wyoming. As we go through next week, the main story will be the stronger cold fronts moving across the Great Basin, which will be the first true taste of fall across the region as temperatures will drop significantly as we move through next week. On Monday, ahead of the first front, winds will be gusty over the northern side of the Great Basin, therefore we have issued high risk for southern Idaho, along with very dry conditions. Temperatures will really start dropping by Tuesday across the region, and also winds will increase further south over western and northern Nevada. Temperatures will decrease to about 15 or 20 degrees below what we're currently seeing as we get towards Tuesday and Wednesday over the northern half of the Great Basin. Therefore, mountain highs will not get out of the 60s, and valley highs will reach the 70s and 80s. Even over southern areas, we will see a decrease in temperature of about 5 to 10 degrees. As we move into Wednesday, that front continues to push eastward, again with cooler temperatures. We will have some higher humidity, especially over the northern region where the temperatures will be the coldest. And you can see how our fire potential has started to decrease across Idaho. Similar conditions on Thursday, just decreasing temperatures and relatively dry conditions. We may have some showers or thunderstorms by the middle of next week that move across Idaho as that front pushes through. Forecast amounts of precipitation just light with the thunderstorms today over the eastern side of the basin. Looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook, taking us into the third week of September, we will see a return of warmer conditions to the eastern half of the Great Basin, but you can see those below normal temperatures over California and the northwest, showing those cold fronts moving into the region, and generally dry conditions. So this will be the season of dry cold frontal passages across the Great Basin, bringing decreased humidity and increased winds. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back tomorrow for the latest updates.